So Section 2 of the Article 3 or Bill of Rights of the Constitution state that the right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures of whatever nature and for any purpose shall be inviolable. And no search warrant or warrant of arrest shall issue except upon probable cause to be determined personally by the judge after examination under oath or affirmation of the complainant and the witnesses he may produce, and particularly describing the place to be searched and the persons or things to be seized, meaning that searches and seizures and arrests are allowed as long as the searches and seizures are not unreasonable. And the arrest is made only if there is warrant of arrest. There are valid warrantless arrests as an exception to the general rule, but that requires um, the compliance of certain requisites, which we will discuss later. So for searches, there must be, as a general rule, a search warrant. But, of course, there are exceptions. But... What is not allowed by law are unreasonable searches and seizures. And for warrant of arrest to issue or search warrant to issue, it is stated here in section 2 that it will only be issued, the warrant of arrest or the search warrant as the case may be, upon probable cause to be determined personally by the judge, not by anyone else. So it is only the judge who can examine and determine if there is probable cause and issue the search warrant or warrant of arrest as the case may be. And the judge has to examine under oath or affirmation, when you say oath, um, if the complainant or the witnesses believe in God, so they have to swear in the name of God that they are telling the truth or affirmation if they don't believe in God. So um, the judge must examine the complainant, the one filing a case or initiating a case, and the witnesses, if any, uh, the witnesses of the complainant, if any. And for search warrants, for it to be issued, it cannot be a general search warrant. The place to be searched and the things to be seized must be particularly described, as well as the person to be arrested. It can't be just anyone. The description must be particular enough to determine who is the person to be arrested. So it is um, the constitutional right against unreasonable searches and seizures. It is in place so that um, agencies in charge with law enforcement or person authorized to make searches or arrests will not abuse their authority. This constitutional right against unreasonable searches and seizures is a personal right, and it can only be invoked by the person whose rights have been infringed or threatened to be infringed. So you cannot invoke your right against unreasonable searches on behalf of another person. The person whose right was infringed is the only one who can invoke this um, constitutional right against unreasonable searches and seizures or arrest, as the case may be. What constitutes a reasonable or unreasonable search and seizure in any particular case is purely a judicial question. And it's determinable from a consideration of the circumstances involved. So what are the requisites of a valid warrant? First is the existence of probable cause. And that probable cause must be personally determined by the judge. After personal examination under oath or affirmation of the complainant and the witnesses, he may produce. On the basis of their personal knowledge of the facts that they are testifying to, it cannot be hearsay. There must be a particularity in the description of the places to be searched in case of a search warrant and the person's to be seized or arrested in case of a warrant of arrest. Uh, if in case it is a search warrant that involves the seizure of certain things, then it must also be particularly described. The warrant must refer to one specific offense. As a general rule, the warrant must indicate the particular place to be searched and the persons or things to be seized. 
The exception is if the nature of the goods to be seized cannot be particularly determined, such as if the nature of the thing is general in description or the thing is not required of a very technical description. The description of the property to be seized need not be technically accurate or precise. Its nature will vary according to whether the identity of the property is a matter of concern. The description is required to be specific only in so far as the circumstances will allow. And an error in the name of the person in the search warrant does not invalidate the warrant, as long as it contains a description person A, including additional descriptions, that will enable the officer to identify the accused without difficulty. A John Doe search warrant is valid, that is if uh, you don't know the person, but the the law does not require the complainant, for example, or or persons in charge of 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 um of making the arrests or searches to really identify who the subject person to be searched or if there are things to be seized that is a property of that person or the person to be arrested. It's sufficient that there is a particular description of that person so if the person cannot be identified by name usually they assign the name john doe so that john doe search warrant is valid there's nothing to prevent issue and service a warrant against a party whose name is unknown so in determining probable cause for purposes of the issuance of warrant hindi kailangang talagang yun na yung evidence that shows that that person is guilty because that is too early too early pa sa stage to determine if a person is guilty or not usually there ju- there should be just enough to suspect a person that a person is in possession of something illegal or a person did something illegal so that's enough for probable cause it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be um, of a level that is that is sufficient for a conviction because the guilt of a person is to be determined in a full bo- full blown trial na at this stage there must just be enough reason for the judge to believe that this person might be in possession of something that is important for a case or in possession of something illegal or that person due to the circumstances there's a chance that he or she is involved in a certain crime so that's enough for purposes of issuance of a warrant of arrest or search warrant as a case may be so a general warrant refers to a warrant that does not describe with particularity the things subject of the search and seizure or where probable cause has not been properly established and this is prohibited by law. So it has to be particular enough. Same with persons. Again, as mentioned, must sufficiently describe the person. Even the John Doe warrant is not a general warrant. There must be description, like for example, the height of the person, how the person looks like, uh, yon for for purposes of warrant. And later na lang i-identify if a case is filed against him, kung ano yung name niya. But hindi pwedeng uh, very general yung description of a person that you cannot determine who talaga is the person to be arrested or for example, if it's a place, kung kaninong bahay yung isusearch, or which place of the house should be searched, hindi rin pwedeng just state a particular residence. The warrant must describe with particularity where in the house, for example, is the th- thing located. So, hindi pwedeng super general because it would become a void warrant. So again, general warrants are void. So any evidence obtained in violation of this. So any evidence found when there is 
a general warrant or an invalid warrant or if there's no warrant at all, lahat ng evidence acquired from that is void. Hindi na magagamit sa proceeding. That is what they call fruit of the poisonous tree doctrine. So, um, the law enforcers, for example, the policemen, they have this responsibility to really obtain a search warrant or warrant of arrest. Otherwise, it will all be for naught. Wala lang, walang kwenta, everything. Um, even if they find drugs, for example, inside the residence, if it's a general warrant, or if there's there's a warrant, there's a search warrant, but there are there are it's an erroneous warrant it did, it did not particularly describe the place or may mga fault dun sa warrant may mga mali dun sa warrant then lahat ng nakuha or na seize doon even if illegal talaga siya such as drugs hindi siya isasama as evidence na magagamit for trial purposes meaning wala so usually the defense if it's a criminal case, for example, a drugs case, they would really look into the validity of the warrant, the search warrant. Because if hindi siya pasok, then they can invalidate everything. Everything that is obtained from that void warrant or that erroneous warrant. Same if it's not issued by the judge. Usually judges, they have jurisdiction. For example, uh, regional trial court judges... Um, they only have jurisdiction in their region. So if, for example, it's in that particular re- region and that judge who issued the warrant does not have jurisdiction over that place or the, or baka judge siya before and then nag-expire na yung license and hindi na siya practicing judge. Retired na siya kunwari. So that is also a void warrant. So for any... Um, any fruits of an irregular warrant that cannot be used as evidence. So, for example, in the search warrant, merong mga particular descriptions of things to be seized. Tama siya, regular siya, valid siya, yung certain items. But may mga items that um, hindi pasok. It's like, um, may nakita silang drugs somewhere, where hindi siya naka-describe sa warrant na pwede nilang hanapin yung pwede silang mag-search sa area na yon. So hindi hindi mai-invalidate yung buong warrant. Only the items na na seize or na obtain na hindi naka-describe dun sa search warrant. It's as if it's as if it's not included. So again, the effect of a void arrest warrant for for warrant of arrest naman. A void arrest warrant would render the arrest invalid and illegal. So the illegality of an arrest, however, does not bar the state from the prosecution of the accused. Pero yun lang, they have to make the arrest again. And they have to have probable cause, for example, if if it's lacking at that time. They have to have probable cause the second time around in order to arrest a person because um, law enforcers cannot just arrest someone arbitrarily there must be reason there must be probable cause kailangan may warrant of arrest or pasok siya sa valid warrantless arrest so um, they can't just arrest anyone there must be probable cause Despite illegality of both search and arrest, thus inadmissibility of evidence acquired, guilt may still be established, however, through a witness testimony, for example. If there are other ways to have that probable cause in order to arrest someone, okay. But if there's a void arrest warrant and that's your only basis, yung void warrant of arrest mo, then the arrest is invalid and illegal. So what is an arrest warrant or warrant of arrest? It's a written document issued by a court ordering any peace officer to bring the person before the court so that he may be bound to answer for the commission of an offense. So kung may warrant of arrest against you doesn't mean that automatically you're guilty. 
it's just that um pwedeng suspect ka that's why they want to bring you in for questioning so that's that's one it doesn't mean that automatically you're liable of of something but again um they can't bring you in if they don't validly arrest you first so for example a police officer asks you to come down to the station it's your choice really if you want to come if you want to cooperate but you can politely decline if wala naman silang warrant of arrest against you however if they have warrant of arrest against you then you don't have that you don't have a choice you really have to to go with the police officers search warrant naman is an order in writing issued in the name of the people of the philippines signed by a judge and directed to a peace officer commanding him to search for certain personal property and bring it before the court so sa search warrant again kailangan particular yung place to be searched and even the items to be seized hindi pwedeng okay hanapin mo lang sa bahay ni ganito not particularly describing kung ano yung hinahanap dapat specific kung ano yung hinahanap and saan hahanapin dapat determinable with certain particularity pero dapat reasonable naman hindi naman kailangan sobrang specific talaga but hindi rin pwedeng very general 